So financial services are very plays a very vital role during COVID. And in fact, uh, two of the big functions it provides is it provides products and services to individual customers, usually in the form of, of uh, some sort of monetary um, uh, product. It, the fact that obviously people go through rough times and they need to borrow money and things like that. But also the banks provide also a very important uh, infusion of funding or capital into companies as well during uh, COVID. Um, and as, as Love alluded to previously, certain companies that invested heavily into digital did quite well during this, this um, uh, pandemic. However, the financial services companies that didn't build out their digital presence, they got hurt very bad. And the reason they got hurt very bad is because banks rely heavily on their branch systems to provide product and services to their customers. When the branches are not open and they're unable to meet face-to-face in providing products and services, that's not that's very difficult for them to conduct business. Um, so during this during this pandemic, uh, a lot of the mid-sized or large companies that didn't invest in these digital transformations, they actually got hurt pretty severely. Um, however, there are uh, there is a set of companies that did exceptionally well during this time period, and those companies are the fintechs. The fintechs have been gaining market share in the financial services industry over the last decade. And boy, did they take advantage of the situation with COVID. And what a fintech is, is simply this. It's a, it's a financial services company that, has, that runs on digital platforms, uses, uses cloud computing, and basically is using next-gen technology, open source technology, similar to what Tim was saying, to basically run their businesses. And they have the ability to sell their products and services, once again, through mobile devices, you know, digital storefronts and all that kind of stuff. And what they're also doing is they're using techniques that were used in the retail industry to gain business intelligence on their consumers. And they're obviously being very proactive in marketing their solutions. So this is, the financial services industry is using all types of technology. They're using blockchain, they're using distributed computing, they're using artificial intelligence and they're using end-to-end integration um, in which Tim will get more into the architecture of what the banks are using. But um, Love, can you kind of walk us through, I mean, you, you've, you've done quite a bit of business in the financial services industry. Can you tell me what you're seeing on this as well? Yeah, uh, so just the personal story, uh, shockingly, I tried to go to a branch uh, of a couple banks that I do business with in, uh, since COVID and you just can't get in. They're closed. Branches are just not open. And the only way to do business is digitally or at the drive through, which uh, is, is interesting. Some of them have completely closed out their branches. Um, so uh, the, the, the story here is that, again, um, you know, as a result of COVID, uh, banks are now moving a lot of their operations to digital if they weren't doing that already. Some uh, who were prepared for this because um, they invested early uh, did very well. Others um, are getting started, and and they, it's it's still not too late, uh, is what I would say. And we're also seeing outside of traditional banking, you know, financial services, mortgage companies who are coming to us saying, "Hey, can you please help us digitize?" Because there are two aspects of it, right? You got to digitize that experience with the customer. So there's minimal need for, for uh, physical interaction, but also on the back end, your team, right? The paperwork and so on and so forth. Uh, a lot of that now needs to be digitized so people can work from home and do everything remotely. So we've, we've been uh, very involved with, uh, you know, in the, a few years back, we, we were privileged to help some of the largest banks in the world, uh, such as JP Morgan Chase, uh, DBS, and, in, in Southeast Asia uh, with their digital transformation. But now we're able to take a lot of those uh, lessons learned and framework and best practices and bring them to mid-size uh, and smaller banks uh, at a much, much uh, more cost-effective uh, uh, pricing in a much faster time to market because uh, you know we've, we've learned a lot of what works, what doesn't work. Uh, and there's a lot of reusability. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Tim, who's personally actually done some of the biggest banking transformation projects in the world to uh, show you the secret sauce uh, a little bit. Tim, you're mute. Oh, thank you very much. That helps. 
Uh, you'll probably notice some similarities here that uh, it's also that uh, that 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 are also related to the 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 retail uh, space. Again, these are all open source tools, so we get to take advantage of that. Uh, they all use you know uh, Kubernetes as the base platform, but you know finance provides its own unique set of business challenges that exist, and this architecture is more aligned to those business challenges. So the three main ones I've captured here are. Uh, first is reducing the complexities and increasing your time to market. I mean, if fintechs are releasing weekly or daily or, or even quicker, sometimes almost instantaneous, and you're releasing quarterly or, or you know, even worse than that, there's no way you're going to be able to compete. So you need to reduce your complexities and help speed up how quick you can get your business idea from inception all the way to production. You want to be able to get insights from your data to make proactive business decisions. If you're reacting to changing market conditions, there's no way you're gonna be able to compete. And then finally, I really haven't met a bank that didn't rely on some sort of legacy, either legacy technical debt or legacy mainframe system. You need a way to integrate that into your modern cloud environment. Uh, so this architecture basically attacks those main principles here. So let's start again on the end user perspective. Again, in banking, you have a good distribution of, of desktop as well as uh, mobile users. Uh, but here you're more in a microservice based architecture. So you need to start implementing a UI and some other feature for your either mobile uh, users, non application or as well as your desktop. This ties into some uh, API gateway, which is very handy for sharing APIs with third parties and you know, throttling traffic and really controlling what goes in and into and out of as well as securing your, your system. Uh, we have a, uh, a microservice based lo logic layer in there, and that is really can grow as, as you know, wide and deep as you need that communicate with each other, all either asynchronous or synchronous. Uh, typically in the banking industry, we see event sourcing is very popular. So every event that goes through there is in a form of an event. And, you know, in the traditional way, we, we, you know, the data, the system of record is usually the mainframe. And if you have to traverse your entire network to get to that data, that is a very lengthy process. It's complicated. You're exposing a lot of risk. So in this particular architecture, we've actually created a uh, Cassandra instance, which is a uh, data at the edge. So it really speeds up the interaction with this uh, system. So moving things closer to your end users instead of traversing it. We use Kafka for a publish and subscribe system so anybody can listen to events. And this is a great way that we can start, you know, collecting user data and then funneling it into a data lake to then run AI and ML against it to do predictive analytics on what we're trying to do with our, our data and what our, what our customers are looking for. So, you know, again, all this, this architecture solves for your scalable, your resilient, your, your secure, and an affordable environment that almost any bank implements.